friend once told me about a time when he was boarding a plane for a flight. He would just pass the cockpit and the pilot called out his name. My friend hadn't noticed him before and as he turned to look he realized the pilot was his friend, his good friend. In fact, he was his next door neighbor. My friend knew what a great pilot he was. He had been flying forever. He flew transports in Vietnam. He'd been a commercial pilot for a couple of decades. He had faced every kind of flight crisis from electrical storms to empty fuel tanks. He was a great pilot. He was a great friend as well. He was the guy that they would count on to lend a hand with the project. He was the one that they trusted with the family dog when they were on vacation. His honesty was above reproach and his loyalty as a friend was unquestioned. My friend chatted with the pilot for a few minutes and then he took his seat. And as he walked back to his seat, he had this thought that ran through his mind. What more could I want? The pilot is experienced and proven. He's one of my best friends that I trust like a brother. I'm in good hands. Well, wouldn't you know it, that knowledge came in handy partway through the flight. An hour into the flight, they hit a wall of turbulence. My friend told me that he's ridden smoother roller coaster rides than that plane ride. Some of the plane, people on the plane gasped. Some prayed out loud, but my friend stayed calm because he had an advantage. He knew the pilot. He knew the pilot's heart and he trusted his skill. The storm was bad, but the pilot was good. Now I share this story because we live in a stormy world, right? We've got a moody economy and we've got aging bodies. There's a declining job market and increased street violence. And so we live with a question. The question is this, do we have a good pilot? The Bible answers that question with a resounding yes. In Psalm 25, it says, You are good, Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Psalm 86 tells us, You, Lord, are forgiving and good. God is good. Good in skill and good in heart. The thing is that many people suffer from small thoughts about God. In an effort to see him as our friend, we've lost his immensity. In our desire to understand him, we've sought to contain him. But the God of the Bible cannot be contained. He brought order out of chaos. He created creation. With a word, he called Adam out of the dust and Eve out of a bone. He didn't consult a committee. He didn't need any counsel. And God has no peer. In Isaiah 46, we read, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. You know, the greatest kings have surrendered their crowns. Alexander the Great is a mound of dust in a tomb right now. And the Queen of England has called her majesty, but she still needs to eat and to bathe and to rest. The one who it truly is majesty is never hungry. He never sleeps. He has never needed any assistance. From the tiniest microbe to the biggest mountain, God sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. God is authority of the world. He is authority over your world, your salary, the traffic of your commute to work, the arthritis in your joints. God reigns over it all. He is never surprised. God has never said, I wonder how that happened. God's power is unsurpassed and his heart is unblemished. In James 1, we read, there is nothing deceitful in, the, in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He has no hidden agenda and no selfish motive. God loves with a good love and forgives with a good forgiveness. And God's goodness is a major headline in the Bible, and that's important. If God were only mighty, we would stand at a distance and salute him. But because he is merciful and mighty, we can approach him. The psalmist wrote, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, God's goodness is essential for us to have a healthy prayer life. I mean, if God was like us but only stronger, why would we pray? If God grew weary, why would we pray? If God had limitations, then why would we pray? But because God is both Father and Creator, because He is holy and high above us, we know that we are always just a prayer away from help. So I want to make a suggestion for each of us. Before you face the world each day, turn to face your Father. Maybe it's a Monday morning and that alarm clock wakes you up from your sleep. And you groan and you roll over and you sit up. 
Now, in the past, you may have made the coffee and turned on the news and began your day with reports about the toxic problems facing the world. But today, instead of facing the news first, turn to face your father first. Now, you may not look like much as you begin your day, but you didn't come to look at you. You come to look at God. And as you focus on his face and his grace and his goodness, something begins to awaken within you. God, the, the weather's looking bad. The economy is bad. But you, God, you are awesome. Who knows, you might even start to worship a little bit. Father, you are good. Good enough to love me, to care for me, to come near to me. God, you are good. You have no questions. You have no second thoughts. You don't consult a clock. You report to no one. You are good. As you think about who God is and what he's like, your world will change. Wars may still rage. The, the traffic still gets clogged. But you become different. You find peace because you've spent time with the pilot. You can trust that he's up to the task, whatever that task is. You know, when my friend was leaving the plane after that rough flight, he came face to face with his friend, the pilot, again. And the pilot apologized. Sorry about that rough patch we went through. I, I hope you weren't too concerned. Well, my friend smiled and he said, no problem. You know, it's totally different when you know who's flying the plane. It's totally different when you know who's flying the plane. Because we know who flies the plane. We know who's in charge of our lives, who's in charge of this world. We can face each day differently because our God is good and our God is mighty and our God loves us deeper than you will ever know. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we can trust you, that in the midst of uncertainty, we can have peace and calm because we know that you are in control. You reign over this world and you reign over our worlds. You are in charge of everything and we can trust you because we know that you are for us and not against us, that you love us with a Father's love, and that you are powerful to walk with us through any storm. Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.